Number seven, which side of the liquid junction of potassium nitrate and sodium chloride will be negative? Well, what I'm going to do is compare the mobilities of each of these ions in water. So the left side is potassium nitrate, and the right side is going to be sodium chloride. Now, because the exponent part of all of these numbers are the same, I'm just going to compare the coefficients. The coefficient is the part before the exponent when we're talking about scientific notation. So when I say the coefficient of potassium, what I mean is 7.62. Okay, that's where these numbers are coming from. So the coefficient of sodium is then 5.19, and then chlorine has a value of 7.91, where nitrate has a value of 7.40. So now we need to analyze this for its migration. So the mobility of potassium is greater than that of the mobility of sodium. So potassium is going to push over towards the right and make this more positive. Chlorine is more mobile than nitrate, so it will push to the left and make this side more negative. So both of those things together make the left side more negative. Number eight, so we have a liquid junction potential. Here we're going to be, we're going to be comparing um, HCl. So we have hydrogen and chloride on the left. And then on the right, we have KCl, so potassium and chloride. Now, because Dalton's atomic theory still holds and all chlorine atoms are, are going to be the same as all other chlorine atoms, we're really only comparing our hydrogen and potassium here. Now, hydrogen has the highest mobility constant that we have, and it's 36.30. It's the largest value on this chart. Potassium's value is 7.62. So because hydrogen's value is so much higher, that's going to push the positive charge over to the right. So the right side of this junction will be positive. Now, the voltage is so much less when you have a greater concentration of potassium because although the mobility constant of hydrogen is much, much greater than the mobility constant of potassium, here the, the concentration of potassium is 35 times greater than that of the hydrogen ions on the left. So because that higher, because that higher concentration is so much higher, then that outweighs the lower mobility. Number nine, we're asked to refer to figure 15.9 and place it in a solution with a pH of 11. So what will the pH reading be? Well, frankly, I've been looking at uh, figure 15.9, and I can't figure out where they get their error from. I understand how to get an error, but I don't know how this graph is supposed to show me what that is. Because in the solution manual, it says that the error is 0.33. So you know what? I'm going to tell you that this particular electrode has an error of 0.33 pH units. And if that were the case, and our solution had a pH of 11, then that means, let's match our significant figures, then that means the meter, the error is actually a negative 0.33 pH units. So then the reading would actually be 10.67 if you have an error of a negative 0.33 pH units. I hope that's clear because the figure that they provided is not. Number 11, so why is measuring the concentration of the hydrogen ion with a pH electrode somewhat inaccurate, but locating the endpoint in an acid base, base titration with a pH electrode can be very accurate? And the answer is because this pH electrode being an ion selective electrode is subject to uncertain junction potentials that plague almost all direct potentiometric measurements. So this unknown junction potential prevents us from, from measuring with precision the concentration of our ion exactly. But because when we're doing an acid-base titration, the changes in the concentration can be measured with very high precision, even though we can't exactly get the value of the concentration of the hydrogen ion. Number 13, how does a compound electrode differ from a simple ion selective electrode? Well, a compound electrode contains a second chemically active membrane that's outside the ion selective membrane. 
The second membrane may be semi-permeable and only allow the species of interest to pass through. Alternatively, the second membrane may contain a substance like an enzyme that reacts with the nanolite to generate some species that the ion selective membrane would react to. Number 14, what does the selectivity coefficient tell us? Is it better to have a large or a small selectivity coefficient? Well, the selectivity coefficient is going to give us a relative response of an ion selective electrode to the ion of interest and some interfering ions. So the smaller the coefficient, the more selective the electrode is. So, and that means the smaller response to the interfering ion. So it would be better to have a small selectivity coefficient.